Daisy Martinez, and I want to welcome you to my kitchen. Today we're going to make a beautiful butterfly grilled chicken, followed by my mother's special potato salad, and ending with a mame tembleque, mame panacota. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo. Cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Diageo. As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. And if you drink, drink responsibly. Diageo. Celebrating life every day responsibly. having a barbecue today and I'm gonna start the whole thing by making dessert first and if that's not fun I don't know what is okay today's dessert is something called tembleque which um, in Spanish means a little quiver or a little shiver a little shake in Puerto Rico tembleque is a traditional dessert flavored with coconut and made with cornstarch to thicken it when I went to culinary school we made panacota which is a similar concept but thickened with gelatin and I just said wow this would really lend itself to the whole tembleque thing without the starchiness of the cornstarch. So I immediately went into the kitchen and started fooling around and came up with a couple of different variations that I loved. My favorite of which is the mame. Mame is a tropical fruit that resembles a sweet potato. It grows on a tree and it's this beautiful pumpkin sweet potato color. It has the sweetness of a sweet potato without the starchiness. And when it's fully ripe, it's got this luscious texture that is so delicious. If you ever have the opportunity to, to get your hands on one, do so. Mames are very difficult to find in this country, but what you can buy is the mame pulp, frozen. The frozen pulp is easier to find. If you can't find it in your grocer, you can definitely find it online. If you can't find it, substitute your favorite fruit. I'm going to add about half this mame because I want to get this tembleque started. I have a half a cup of heavy cream and a quarter teaspoon of salt, one cup of confectioner's sugar. I'm just going to stir this around and I want to work this in so that I don't splash up a lot and I want gentle heat on this because I'm working with cream and I don't want the cream to curdle. Isn't that a pretty color? Just want to make sure that the sugar is dissolved. I have uh, the juice of a half a lemon. Look what that does. Oh, it's gorgeous. Mm. Okay, and that is warm enough that I can go ahead and add the gelatin. We add the gelatin to the warm fruit mix because we want it to dissolve. Watch your heat to make sure that this doesn't start to boil over. You want to make sure that all the gelatin is dissolved because if it doesn't, it's going to end up in little clumps and you're going to have these gummy clumps in your dessert and that's not a good thing. I see a little smoke coming off the top and that's telling me that this is done and I'm going to go ahead and take this out into this bowl and we're going to set this in an ice bath. There she goes. I'll just get my whisk so I can cool this off quickly. Why heat it up to cool it off? We heat it up to dissolve the gelatin, right? And then we're going to cool it off because we're going to fold cold, chilled, whipped, cream to this and if we add something that's warm or hot it's going to just take the whole fluff all the air out of the whipped cream and we don't want that we want it to be nice and fluffy it's funny that things that you take for granted when i was a little girl and we would go on vacation to puerto rico all of this fruit was so readily available to us i mean it was just going outside and picking it off the tree and now sometimes they have like these little truck stands. You'll find mangoes and raw sugar cane, which I used to love as a little kid. My grandmother would give us little stalks and we would chew, you know, and suck all the juice out. It was so good. And every once in a while I'll find mames um, on those and I'll always grab a few because they are such a treat. Okay, let's go over to the refrigerator and get the stuff that I need for my whipped cream.
when you whip cream, you want your stuff to be as cold as possible. So I take my beaters and I'll put them in the fridge or the freezer, my bowl as well as my cream. And I had a cup of cream here and I'm going to go ahead and whip that. Start off low because you don't want splatter. And then pick it up. Okay, and now you see these nice little peaks that are forming on top of the cream. And that's showing me that the cream is ready. See those right on top? All those little pretty waves? That's what we're looking for. Now we're going to take this out. And I'm going to start folding in my cream. The idea behind folding the cream as opposed to beating the cream is that we don't want to lose any of the air that we work so hard to beat into that cream. And if you beat it in, that's what's going to happen. And the color is just, you see, I mean, it's so pretty. It looks delicate. Oh, so pretty. I get excited about things like that. Okay, now I have my little ramekins here. And what's good about this dessert is that you can make it and while it's setting, you can get the rest of your dinner going. And you can see it's just so light. This is from me. Mmm, yummy. Boy, is that good. I'm just gonna cover this. We're gonna take a little walk to the fridge. 30 minutes and we'll have a gorgeous tembeke. Everybody loves to barbecue especially chicken. One thing though, I find that it's hard to, to handle a whole chicken on the grill, unless of course you have a rotisserie, and unless you have that rotisserie, you end up using chicken parts. Now I'm gonna show you a way to grill a whole chicken on the barbecue. It's really easy. Let's start off with Senorita chicken, okay? I'm gonna turn the chicken on its belly and we're gonna cut out the spine. Go right up the back, just like this, okay? One and the other side. Ta-da, all done. Okay, I'm cutting that little cartilage nub at the top of the breast so that I can free the keel bone, this big bone that runs down the breast of the chicken. Pull it right out. I'm going to take out the wishbone right up here. You just feel for it with your finger. You make an incision along it. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Feel for it with your finger. Make an incision and then just free it up with your finger. The whole thing comes right out. And this is the chicken's collarbone. Okay. Now I have a piece of plastic that I'm going to put over my chicken. Pound the chicken till it's Fairly even. So I want to pound it just enough to flatten the top of the breastbone, which is usually the thickest part of the chicken. That's pretty good. Sprinkle with adobo. And adobo is onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper. Sometimes it has lemon zest. You can pretty much get store-bought adobo with a gazillion different variations. And I'm going to tuck this little baby right into a plastic bag. Okay, I'm gonna make my marinade now. And how do I do that? I use vinegar, because vinegar breaks down the chicken and helps keep it moist. I'm gonna go ahead and add three cups of red cider vinegar. The adobo and the vinegar are going to make the meat tender, yet juicy and flavorful. You don't have red cider vinegar? Use whatever kind of vinegar you like. And I have a cup of water. And I have some garlic. And I'm just going to go ahead and whack a couple of these garlics. Just break them up a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and start dropping things into my bags. Throw in some garlic. Throw in a couple of bay leaves in each bag. I have a little lemon juice here. Add that to my marinade. Two cups. So you can marinate it about 30 minutes at room temperature, or you can tuck it into the refrigerator and marinate it overnight, the morning of, the afternoon, whenever it works for you. What's the best thing you could serve with grilled chicken at a barbecue? Potato salad. 
And in my house, in Daisy's house, the best thing I serve with grilled chicken is mommy's potato salad. This is not potato salad like your mama used to make. This is potato salad the way my mommy likes to make. Okay, I've got some little potatoes here, these little Eastern potatoes, and I'm just going to go ahead and quarter them. And mommy would take the skins off her potatoes. Ma, if you're watching, I like the skins. These, these skins are like paper soft. They're really, really thin, and they don't bother me at all. I'm gonna salt that water. And this is the kind of potato salad. I love making potato salad like this. It only gets better like the next day if there's always leftovers. I cook a lot. I like having something to go back to the next day and have it for lunch. And I'm just gonna set these back here on the back burner and bring my fry pan to the front. Here I have some chorizo that I've started. I'm gonna go ahead and slice the rest of my chorizo. You know what I say about chorizo in my house? And on the eighth day, he created chorizo. I love chorizo. I love it in rice, I love it in soup, I love it with eggs, I love it, I just love chorizo. If you can't find chorizo, in dewy sausage or something like that, it makes a nice substitution. Okay, I've got a pan here that I've been heating and I just wanna cook that at medium heat just till the chorizo gets shiny. Just wanna like heat it through a little bit, make it shine, to bring out the flavor of the chorizo. Okay, my mother had a friend whose name was Don Santiago. He used to live in the same building that we lived in when I was first born in Brooklyn. This is mayonnaise. I got some sour cream here. Go ahead and mix that together. And Don Santiago had been a chef on a cruise ship. And my mother used to pick his brain for like a lot of party stuff. He would show her how to decorate a platter and so on and so forth. I'm gonna add a little water to thin out this dressing. And I'm gonna explain why in just a second. Just whisk in the water. Okay. I'm gonna add a couple of splashes of white wine vinegar. Ooh, that smells so pretty. That vinegar just perks the whole thing right up. So potato salad was one of those things that um, Don Santiago taught my mother to make and then she ran with it. I guess I kind of know who I take after, you know? But I remember him being at my house teaching my mother to make potato salad. I have some hard boiled eggs here and I'm going to take the yolks out. I'm going to strain or rice the yolks into the dressing. Look how pretty this looks. They look like little jewels. How gorgeous is that? And I'm just going to rice my yolks. And this is why I added water to my dressing. And that usually tightens the whole thing up and I don't wanna lose the creaminess, the shininess of the potato salad. So you just loosen the whole thing up with a little bit of water and it works just fine. Let's just stir this in. I'm going to add some grated carrots, some sweet red bell peppers, okay, a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of pepper, I'm gonna add chives or scallions, okay, and that's gonna be the dressing. We'll tweak the salt right before the end. I'm going to chop these egg whites, add them to our salad, okay? And so we're just gonna wait for these potatoes to boil and then we'll continue with our potato salad. My potatoes are ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to use my knife here to, here we go, smooth this butter, nice and easy. These potatoes are really tiny, especially I core them. You know, they don't take a really long time. Take my pot holders and bring this over to the sink. You want to be careful when you pour boiling water in a sink like that because you get this back draft of steam and steam burns. You can get a nasty burn with steam. A word of caution, just be aware of that. Give these a little shake. And then I'm going to set them on paper towels to air dry for a second. Okay. And you could actually let them cool before dressing. I'm not that particular. I'm just going to go ahead and put my potatoes in. Come on, girls, everybody into the pool. whoop de doo there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to let's give this a little, little stir. Okay, it's a little salt. 
a little more pepper. And then Conchita's big guns, I'm pulling them in. My chorizo, look at this. Is that absolutely beautiful? And then I'm gonna go ahead again, just give it another little stir. Mmm, yummy. Okay, and then just to prick the whole thing up, I've got some pretty chopped cilantro here. And that should bring us, oh wow. Woo, I just got that. My mouth is watering now. I want to make sure that the, mmm. I'm doing my happy dance. I'm gonna set the potato salad aside and I'm gonna go take a look at that chicken. Okay, I got two chickens with my name on them. Let's just take these girls right out of the marinade. Give them a little shake, 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 shake. And set them right here on paper towels. Lovely. Come on, look nice. Smile for the camera. And then we want to finish patting those off. Pat them dry. Because you don't want a wet chicken on your grill. It'll stick and then you'll have a problem. Okay. A roll of plastic wrap. Let's take a walk over to the grill. Set these little girls on the fire. Hi. Okay, we're out here. It's a little chilly today, but it's going to take a blizzard to keep me away from my grill. And I preheated my oven, so I'm ready for the oiling of the grill. So you have a paper towel, and you just want to oil it down, okay? I'm going to grab my chickens and place them on the grill, skin side down. I have a baking sheet, which I'm going to set on top of the chickens. And then I have these two garden bricks which have been scrubbed meticulously and wrapped in foil. And then I'm going to close the grill and we'll take a look at them in about five minutes. So the three things you want to remember are oil your grill, pat your chicken dry, and don't place the chickens directly over the heat source. Okay, I think it's time to take a peek. It's been about eight minutes or so. Let's move this over. Okay, so let's turn over the first chicken. Beautiful. It's bubbly, the skin is crisp, it's nice and brown and golden. I'm smelling the vinegar from the marinade, the brine, it's absolutely delicious. And then we'll turn over, wow. And that looks real pretty. You have nice color, the skin looks absolutely gorgeous. Both of Cinderella's stepsisters are beauties. I'm gonna go ahead now and Put the tray back on. So in about eight to 10 minutes, we're gonna take a look at the chicken, check it for doneness, and then I can take it back inside to the kitchen and pour myself a glass of wine and um, get to know this chicken a little bit better. The chicken has landed. We've got some beautiful chicken here. color is just the way I like it, nice brown. And when we cut this chicken, you're going to see it's unbelievably juicy. The marinade with the adobo makes it nice and plump. Lovely. Oh my goodness. Mm. It's moist, it's juicy. I'm tasting a little bit of the brine from the marinade which is really, really lovely. You will notice the difference in the texture and the taste of the chicken after marinating like that, even for only 30 minutes. Lovely, and then I'm gonna get a platter to put my chicken on. Fabulous, don't you think? And we'll set up some dark meat. How pretty does that look? Set up some white meat and a little, little wing. Set it up just like that. One of these wings has my name on it. Which one, I'll tell you in a second. There's my chicken, how pretty does this look? Okay, and then I have my gorgeous potato salad here that I'm just gonna give a quick little toss to. And you know, we seasoned this while it was still hot, so you wanna just check again to see. Mmm, wow. This is absolutely delicious. And don't we have something else in the fridge? 
Yes, dessert. Or then Blackie, I almost forgot about that. Okay, so I'm gonna run my knife along the edge. I have some hot water here that I'm just going to set that in just a second. Okay, and now I'm gonna pray really, really hard. <laughs> Only kidding. I have a plate here and we're going to invert. There we go. We have our panacotta. And to this, you could add any garnish that you like. I have some lovely chopped strawberries, pineapple, and papaya. I have some really pretty star fruit that we could decorate this with. And then just go ahead and give a sprinkle to add some pretty color to the plate. And I have a little sprig of mint. There we go. Ooh, I'm fabulous. There is no excuse not to try this recipe. This is absolutely delicious. So whether it's inside or outside, winter or summer, my house or your house, you have the makings of a wonderful barbecue dinner. Gorgeous grilled chicken, fabulous potato salad, and drop dead mame tembleke. And it sounds like a party to me. I raise my glass to you. Buen provecho. Daisy Cooks, Latin flavors that will rock your world, contains over 200 of her detailed recipes. With each order, you also get a Daisy Cooks DVD at no additional cost. It includes the never broadcast Daisy Pilot and three favorite shows. To order, call 800-336-1917. The price is $29.95. You can also order the Daisy Cooks book with free DVD at her website, daisycooks.com. Hola, it's Daisy. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at daisycooks.com. Tell me what you think. Sign up for my newsletter and get recipes and tips in English and Spanish. It's all at daisycooks.com. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is innovative design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy Microbubbles lift to dissolve grease and grime. Brillo. Cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. Diageo. As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. And if you drink, drink responsibly. Diageo. Celebrating life every day responsibly.